So welcome back everyone. So today's video, we're gonna talk about getting your truck set up to handle every situation that you could run into. For me, uh, having a truck or pick, my pickup is, is kind of a, a mobile toolbox that's gotta to fit a whole bunch of different roles. Uh, being a structural wildland firefighter, medic, that takes up a bunch of space in the truck because there's so much equipment involved having the tools, uh, having things, you know, to, to anything that can happen to you uh, in any given condition being out in the country is important because you can get out in the middle of nowhere and just for lack of a simple tool or a little something to fix a, fix a broken hose or something, uh, can you could be out there for a long time. Uh, there is no AAA and there's maybe no one coming along for a long period of time. Another thing that's been kind of uh, on my mind a little bit is to having secure storage in the truck because uh, I'd like to keep a rifle in there. Why do I want to keep a rifle in there? I just like to have a rifle around. You know, let's say, for example, um, there's a coyote. You know, we have a coyote issue you can deal with. Let's say, for example, um, you hit a, a deer or an elk on the animal it's, or, or on the road and it's suffering to be able to put something out of its misery, personal security and all of that. Um, all the things, you know, a million different reasons out here where we live, it's just an appropriate thing to do. Back in the day when I was younger, you know, it was okay to hang rifles up in a rifle rack. You know, that was just commonly done and and it's amazing how far, how things have changed. That's just not an option anymore. I mean, it's, it's just unthinkable. But even 25 years ago, that was just the norm. So today we're going to be looking at a secure firearm storage in the truck, something that we can um, have peace of mind that that's, it's not going to get into the wrong hands. It's not going to get stolen unless someone's super motivated. Uh, in addition to that, also a way that you could maybe, you know, put your phone or wallet or different things in there for, you know, that's going to keep it secure more. Uh, that's going to be a little bit more harder to get into than just breaking some glass. So I'll show you kind of where we're going to start and then uh, this will probably be a mini series. We'll kind of talk about uh, what I choose and why and, and something to think about. This is going to be kind of a summertime uh, version. Wintertime certainly is a little bit different, but um, let's uh, let's get in. Let's let me show you what I've got sorted for the um, firearm storage. So before we do that, let's we got to get all the equipment out of there. So they'll just kind of show you the, the things that I have to carry in the back of my truck. This is a Mystery Ranch briefcase uh, that'll have all my paperwork uh, for, for wildland firefighting task books and all those things. Um, and then my line pack and helmet, those all have to go in there. This big red bag here, this is a, a this will be structural firefighting gear, turnouts, helmet, boots, all the stuff for her house fires. Full medical kit for any medical calls, and the biggest one is uh, the uh, my main fire line pack. This is a extended stay fire line pack. There's everything I need in here to to get by comfortably for 14 days. Sleeping bags, tents, 14 pairs of socks, 14 t-shirts, 14 pairs of underwear, toiletries, all of those things for long deployments. And I could extend to 21, so that all fits in this big bag here. So you can see right there, that's a lot of stuff. That's a, not even including tools and, and other supplies, water and maps and all that stuff. So we're gonna have to be have something that's really compact and efficient because I can't lose all this space. I've already pressed for it uh, just the way it is. So this is what we have to work with. This truck is a 2001 Ford F-250 extra cab. I bought this 10 years ago for $4,000. It was an old, <laughs> old worn out fleet truck then. Uh, but it's been a really good truck, close to 300,000 miles, and I've taken care of it uh, mechanically anyway. Uh, and it's been a good truck, and I don't have any reason to think it won't go uh, another 100,000. So it never did come with back seats. The only thing that I really had were these uh, jump seat deals. And when I had first bought it, uh, they had built a plywood platform in here. So there was a hump right here, so it was flat. And I don't know what they cared about a bunch of equipment. I was thinking that I was going to want to have some back seats here. So I bought these back seats, these jump seats on, on eBay, and put them in. And in 10 years, I've never used them once. They've just been a huge hindrance to me, making just taking up a bunch of space. Let's take these out. I'm going to get rid of these things uh, and then we'll uh, give us free up a little space and see if we can't make a better use of it. So this is the locking vault uh, that I'm going to that I'm going to attempt to put in here. Uh, it's made by who builds this thing? Secure it. This is their fast box. It's a, it holds a, two rifles or whatever it is you want to put in there. It can be used horizontally or vertically. I bought a couple of these uh, some time back. Um, for gun storage in the house and what I like about them is that uh, 
you can stack them together. And so let's, there's some firearms that I don't want Jack to have, or anyone to have access to, but there's some that I want him to get to. You know, if he wants to get his pellet guns and his BB guns, uh, I, I don't necessarily want, want kids having access to my full safe. So what I can do is, and I have it set up in the house, I've got one of these little ones next to the safe that he knows the combination to, that with permission and supervision, uh, he can get in there and get his get his BB guns out. So that's kind of um, one way you can use them, or where we can mount them horizontally, which I think is probably going to be the best bet for us today, uh, in a way that we can use the combination or the key lock, and then we can have a secure place to keep a rifle or shotgun, or just some sort of beater truck gun that uh, uh, is not super precious to us. Because th so that's kind of what we're starting with today. Boy, good riddance to these seats. I can't believe how long I put up with this stuff. And I sometimes, you know, you just get used to something and you just forget that even if it's unhandy, you forget that you can change it. Oh, is that going to be a spinner on the bottom? Of course it is. All right, we'll come back to that. Man, those should be secure. That shouldn't happen. Are you kidding me? I've got to get down there and hold it, put a vice grip or something on it. I can't believe that. Aha, I figured it out. I was, <laughs> I was about ready to go get the plasma torch and get medieval on it, but it was, uh... I couldn't figure it out. It was on the bottom side. I, there was nothing coming through. I could not. Uh, I got to looking like, oh, you can get to it from the bottom here. So it, if, if these weren't metric, they'd be a lot easier to work with. Aha! Oh, that makes me happy. I couldn't imagine how they got those installed. <laughs> the bad thing about it is I put them in here and I should have known better. Okay, now we're now we're logging. After an incredible amount of aggravation and difficulty, the seats are out. So that was way, way harder than it should have been. Got a bunch of broken glass in here from the, the day I threw a piece of firewood through the back window. That's the thing with broken glass. If you ever break a window in your car, one of the things that's impossible that you'll never do is you'll never get every piece out. I don't know why, just too many pieces there. Okay, so let's see what our mounting options are gonna be here. So what do they give us here for mounting options? We've got these sliding brackets here. We've got a couple of feet. So this is pre-drilled on one side. Goodness. Pre-drilled on one side, obviously, to get the screws through. Not on this, oh. This side too is drilled on both sides. This has, these have feet on them and looks like, oh, there's inserts here for, the, for legs. Now that, that might, that might be kind of handy. Also, what else we got here? Also, we have holes drilled in the bottom so we could mount, well, it wouldn't it be nice to mount this way. If we mount this way, you could put two rifles in there. Like if you're gonna go hunting, it would be nice to have if you went hunting with your buddy, let's say you went to have a lunch or something in a, in a diner, you could, you could use this system here. So the butts the, go in here like that. And then these guys here have the bungees to hold the barrel that lock it on these louver systems. So that, that would be fine standing, but we've also got one more thing they gave us here with this. So we've got a pad that's got cutouts for for the uh, loops in here. You can put straps on, so we could strap probably two rifles in there that way too. And then it's got the foam pad on there. So let's let's throw it in there and just kind of see what we got, what our options are here before we get too carried away. Okay. So, obviously mounting it upright is not going to be an option. It's just too tall. It's funny because I measured it. I 
but it would work. Well, it will work. Well, it will work. You just got to get it, get it in here right. But I don't think it's going to work. I don't know that this is an option because of the step. So I mean, I guess we, a guy could, and it's not going to be secure this way either. It's even if you bolted it to the bottom, it's going to be flopping about. You'd have to secure. I don't think that that's going to work for us actually. So the other option is, unfortunately, they put those inserts for those cool legs on the back. What good does that do? They should have, they should have put those inserts on the, on the front as well to give a guy more options. Okay, so the hinge is on this side. We don't want that. So this needs to flip, right? Well, unless we mount it like this. So if we mount it like this, there then when we want to open it this would open close down like that um that is one option or i think i like it better like this but with the door with the hinge the other way It'll open, well, maybe this way, because if, if it opens that way, it's gonna hit the thing and it's gonna close on your fingers. So it kind of might have to go this way. And then we have a pretty good security box. Maybe, so do we want to mount it in the center? So this is the configuration I'm gonna go with. This way, it will open and stay open. And I can access it without trying to hold it up and pinch it in my hand. And I've got it slid tight to the side of the body. Whenever you, whatever you're putting accessories in your truck uh, or car, three points of contact means you want to bolt it from three ways. That's the way the manufacturers always do it. And if you can get three different bolts in it, usually you're going to be really secure and it's not going to give you any trouble. Two is just not enough. So the problem we run into, so we got these nice factory holes here. Let's utilize those. But how do you get it perfectly lined up? You try to measure these with a tape measure, it's just never gonna, never gonna work. So one trick you can do is get a piece of paper or cardboard, right? And we'll come right to the end here, right where the box is gonna, is gonna touch. And we're just going to make a, a template here. Make sure that that's right. And then we'll fill those holes. Where'd they go? There they are. Fill the holes there. Well, usually you can draw them, put a little, get a little pad in there, but we can do the same thing here. We'll find this hole here. There it is. Right, and we'll just we'll just poke it through there. That'll work too. Now we have a perfect template that we can drill our holes in our box in, and we'll get it right the first time. So this is where our pattern is going to come in really handy. So we'll uh, take we're going to drill holes through the back of the box, right in the center. Um, I measured it so it looks like it'll work. So now what we have is we have a perfect a template that's perfectly lined up here. It helps to do this. Make sure you choose a day where it's really windy. You always want to do this type of work at a high, high wind day. Okay, so let's just put a mark here, right there, and here. That's all we needed. That's all we needed from our paper here. So we want to drill these right in the center, here and here. That'll work. I'm going to use a step drill. If you don't have a uh, these step drills and this one's this one got left out in the toolbox is all rusty but it's still they still work even the cheap ones seem to work really good i think this is like harbor freight type of type of brand but for fabricating what it does is it gives you the ability just in one tool to drill multiple size holes holes when you're just doing like quick and dirty fabricating work but they're one of my favorite tools step drills step bits Yeah, that one's seen better days, but usually they work better than that. Actually, it works really good. That is now go 
one more size bigger here. One more. Nice. Okay. That'll do it. That was simple enough. Now we can see how our holes line up. I'm, there may be those of you out there that think this is overkill. I'll tell you, if you if you keep it keep a rifle or a handgun in your car, like many people do, just the world that we live in now, you're running a risk of having a serious liability issue that could you could lose everything. Um, if someone were to freak in and steal that and, and commit a, some sort of an act of crime with it. And it's got nothing to do with fair. It's just got everything to do with the way that the justice system is and the attitude towards some folks that may be wanting to make an, wanting to make an example of you. So these are the bolts that we're going to use uh, to secure the box. There's two of these running through two layers of sheet metal and that will be fine. So when you're doing stuff inside your cab, you know, and I never thought about this when I was younger, but I tell you a couple hundred, uh, running a couple hundred motor vehicle accidents is, with the fire department has changed my outlook on this drastically. Secure your stuff inside your cab. If it comes loose, it is, do you want a, a steel truck box bouncing around inside of, uh, inside the cab uh, with you in it? If you do, let's say you have a rollover, you know, I saw, I ran a call one time in Colorado and the couple put skis inside their Subaru and it rolled over about five times. And those skis just, I don't want to get into what those skis did. It was, it was gri grisly though. So, uh, so the bolts, the two bolts right there was to secure it. Now on the side, if we're, they can see right here on the side, let me pan you over. We have a kind of a different situation. We have, we have to go into the, the sheet metal here, uh, but we can't get, behind it to, to put a nut on if you ever run in a situation like that now because the bulk of the strength is going to be on the bottom bolts this here doesn't require a whole lot of strength it's just going to keep it from moving back and forth you know just make it so when we touch it it's not wiggly uh, and to do that these little screws are wonderful if i can bring you in here here if it'll focus you know, focus focus i have no idea i don't have a flip out screen anymore so these are little self-tapping uh, sheet metal screws and if you look on them they have a drill bit in the end that they'll drill right through and this is kind of another version of it that doesn't have the drill bit but if you push hard enough those will usually go in too so we can put two or three of these guys in there it, all it is is just holding that you know making it secure side to side that should be enough so let's run those in there and see if that doesn't stiffen everything up got both of our bottom bolts in and we'll want to hold this back so we'll use an impact driver for this these guys and these i love these screws these sheet metal screws so we'll get that back as far as we can baby so uh reach in the box you see the one that i'm wiggling yep. all right so i i i want you to pull it out uh, just a little bit right there and hold it right there up oh, towards me nope Pull it out a little bit, just a tiny bit, because I've got need a little room to start the thread. This to thread it. Yeah. Now, can you turn it to the right? Is it free? Yeah. Okay. So, what, is it really important that you hold it right there? Because okay. I, it's so tight under here. It's like working on a watch. Okay, go ahead and zap it. Good, we got it. See, this mechanic work is easy. What? Nope, that's all. I need. There is one thing I need. What's that? Co concrete apron on the shop side of the shop. You need a what? Concrete apron. Oh, I'll let you take care of that one. All right. So that's it for the install. I'll try
try to bring you in here. It's a little bit tight, but here you can see the box is absolutely secure. Secured on the edges, big bolts on the bottom. Uh, not going anywhere. Secure in a rollover. Easy to get to. I'm, I pushed it over towards the driver's side, and I think that makes more sense because I can. It's a little bit easier for me to access, and that's that's the point I'm gonna want to get to it anyway. So if we open the door, it stays open. We have plenty of room, and then you can see. Maybe you can see in there. Uh, there's room for two two uh, uh, rifles or a shotgun. I've got a shotgun and just an old beater AR in there. I could leave one or the other or whatever you want, but they're secured in there with the bungees, those little, uh, those front mounted straps, they lock in with a set screw so they won't go anywhere. And you're not gonna worry about them really rubbing or beating up each other. Or there's just plenty of room for lots of other things too. So, I mean, it can, plenty of room here. It can, if you want to throw in some extra magazines and body armor or anything else that you wanted in there. Now we have a secure way to keep that all in there we can access with a key or with a combination lock and it doesn't take up any more space actually it takes up less space than we had with the seats there so that's it for the the video but uh it tur turned out very good i'm very happy with it uh there's lots of room in there you can put all sorts of things in there and keep it secure i feel much better about that especially transporting hunting rifles and i mean i how, I don't know the, how, many time, how much time I've spent going back and forth, you know, if I want to be gone I want to throw a shotgun or a rifle in in and out of the safe and I always worry about it when I parked it I locked the door or is there other kids with me, you know, now we're, we're set I can just have a couple of extras and throw it in there. What I'd recommend uh, uh, for us Americans, and this is, I'm reluctant to do these videos because of all of the backlash from the anti-gun crowd primarily our European friends and you know what I mean it's I don't know how I guess it's it's this is the United States is the only country in the entire world we still have the freedom to go out and to and to buy firearms and defend ourselves and that's a big deal and if you haven't been raised with that or or uh, just just don't understand it I, I get that but don't um, don't bring that ignorance please into the comments because it's you know, I mean, people are saying this, and you know, uh, you know, I, I feel this way or I feel that way. You know, to me, comments from people that live in countries that that you don't have the right to do what we have to do. You don't, you don't even, if you wanted to, you you couldn't do it. it it's like, uh, well, how's, well, how can I make it, give it a good analogy? It's like a a man that uh, doesn't have the ability to get up, say, I refuse to stand. Well, <laughs> you refuse to stand because you don't have the ability to get up. You you know, you, you can be anti-gun because you don't have the ability, you don't even understand it or, or no, haven't ever been around it, nor do you have the option to even, uh, to have one or to possess one. So it's, if this it seems alien or weird to you, I mean, it's just, it's our culture. It's something that's really important to many of us Americans. And what, this isn't about fear or fanaticism. This is about responsibility. This is about looking after ourselves. It's about looking after our families. It's about securing firearms in a responsible way that where nothing bad is going to happen, or at least we can mitigate it. Yeah. Is this 100%? Could some guy that was super motivated, could he get this out? Of course he could. Yeah. But for, for the most cases, it's going to be a whole lot better than trying to hide it underneath of a jacket or something. So that's kind of... Um, kind of where I'm coming from so oh so if you want to see uh, a second part to this if you want to see um, how uh, the rest of the equipment and different you know kind of my idea or my take on on really equipping a truck to be capable or your car SUV whatever you have let me know in the comments let's do let's go for 20,000 thumbs up I have to ask because everyone forgets if you give me 20,000 thumbs up we'll do a part two to this and we'll, we'll build on that. So if you'd like to see that, right now's your chance. Click the thumbs up and uh, the chainsaw, you guys did the chain, uh, you guys uh, will get the chainsaw chap video that's coming up maybe tomorrow if they show up today, maybe today or the next day, but we'll do that really soon. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.